Why is it doing that? Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't start that. I really like this. I really, really like this. Okay. It's green. Okay, cool. We'll get started at 7.05. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Everything looks good on my end. It's green. The connection looks good. We're in a new setting today. I felt like this was more aesthetically pleasing for the, um, what am I, what word am I looking for? <laughs> I don't even remember what word I was fucking looking for. Let me put it up a little bit. You know what I should have done? Hey, perfect. And this, this is a book club. So this is like, this is a really good book too. That's what I was thinking. If I should put the, the name of the book, if I should write it down. That's what I'm going to do so people don't keep asking me. <laughs> like, I'm like, so people don't keep asking me. Make sure we can see. The one thing I do like is that, like, this, where I am, like, where I was before, it used to close at, like, 5, but now this one closes at 9, so... It's perfect. I got like my little own little office space. <laughs> own little office space. So hopefully, you know what? And I don't even know if y'all gonna be able to just read it fucking backwards. That was kind of. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I don't even care. I don't even care. It's been a long fucking day. I'm gonna still kind of like have it. I should have wrote it the opposite way. Should I have not? But how the fuck do you do that? I'm not about to stress myself out. If anybody asks me for the title of the book, bitch, I'm just going to tell y'all. Because <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Okay. So, welcome in, everybody. This is the book club segment. Um, so, for people who are joining, this is not a collective reading. I repeat, this is not a collective reading. This is the book club. <laughs> because you guys was, like, asking me that too much last time. Um, so, I just wanted to put that out there. We are reading... One Day My Soul Just Opened Up by Ayana Van Zandt. And this, we're going to read chapters 8, 9, and 10. So we're about to get started. Damn. Hold on. Let me get my notebook and let me stop playing and my uh, highlighter. Because this book is dropping hella fucking gems and I'm not missing any today. Do you hear me? None. Cause I was tweaking last time not having my shit together but I'm prepared today <laughs> super prepared okay cool yes turn that on okay so we're on day eight this is page 70 for anyone who has the book or if you're reading along on the PDF file damn what the fuck is this in my eye Give me one second. I don't. As soon as you're about to start reading, it's something in my eye. That's weird. 
nonetheless. <laughs> Honor the divine with simplicity. Working definition. The principle we are working with today is simplicity. It is a state of being simple, uncompounded or uncomplicated, clear, direct, existing in the most basic form, free of judgment or perception. We love each other. It took 30 years and three marriages to other people for us to reach this conclusion. It resulted in our decision to spend the rest of our lives married to each other. The entire story is a subject for another book. In the most simplistic, direct form, this was our story. I am sure the hearts of most women flutter at the very thought of finally being with the one man who you have loved all your life. So now we have to see the title of the book too. <laughs> the very thought of it would probably make Madonna's breath away, take Madonna's breath away. I'm sure it would be enough even for her. It was not, however, enough for me. I had to have a wedding. Picture this, if you will, he's 46, I'm 44. He's got seven children, I've got three. His parents are divorced, his father remarried. My parents are deceased. He's got two ex-wives with whom he maintains very supportive relationships. I've got three best friends, one of whom is my daughter, and we want to have a wedding. Correction, a big wedding. Wait, there's more. It has to be an outdoor wedding, my idea, with a live band, his idea, no tent, too expensive, near a hotel, all of our children, parents, best friends, exes, and the band, members live out of town on the Saturday before Mother's Day. I would say that was about as complicated as simply being in love and wanting to get married could get. If I said that, however, I would not be telling the truth. He lives in Georgia. I live in Maryland. Wait, there's more. The astrologer would have to help us pick the date. This date would then have to be checked with the numerologist. <laughs> I would never forgive myself if on our own, we choose a date when the stars and planets are doing something weird. The two ologists could not agree. After digesting the information, we picked what promised to be the best of the two dates. Next, I designed the invitation. It was an odd sized invitation to be printed on hard to find paper, which did not match any of the standard size envelopes, which many printers looked at and said, I've never seen anything like this. We might be able to do it, but it's gonna cost you. Next, I hired a planner who immediately said, what's the budget? Budget? What budget? <laughs> this is what we want. We need you to help us pull it together. You must have a budget so that we can negotiate the best price for everything. I gave her a figure off the top of my head. That's reasonable, she said, as she went out to hunt and gather the things we wanted and needed. How was I to know that when she mentioned my semi-well-known name to an enterprising business person, business savvy will rise to a whole new level? or that the new level would create the need for a budgetary adjustment or real hard bargaining tactics. My planner knew how to drive a hard bargain. Unfortunately, that was of no use to us in obtaining the material for my dress, which was coming from another country to be shipped to a designer who lived in another state. Wait, there's still more. There was another event scheduled immediately after our wedding. We had four hours to complete the ceremony and the reception an hour for the ceremony, an hour for pictures, that left two hours to dance, eat, and greet about 300 guests. The thought of it took my breath away. <laughs> Y'all see how I even stumbled upon my words when I said that? Like, can you imagine having to do that? Talk to 300 people in less than two hours? Two hours at a fucking way? That's too much, that's too much. All right, let me keep going. Move. <laughs> Move the time back an hour, it felt better, but it would require the planner and I working very closely together to come up with a manageable schedule. Under normal circumstances, a bride working with an experienced planner to coordinate a simple wedding would not be a difficult task. In this case, however, I was not planning a simple wedding. I was planning a wedding at the same time I was moving a business into a new building that mysteriously developed a leaking roof three days after we moved in. I was planning a wedding at the same time that I was completing not one, but two different manuscripts. 
I was planning a wedding with a maid of honor and matron of honor who lived in Alaska and Detroit, respectively. I was an orphan planning a wedding and trying to decide who should give me away. My 26-year-old son, who insisted he would have to wear sunglasses, my very public shy godfather, or my older brother, who might or might not decide to show up despite his semi-sober pronounce pronouncement after a 10-year absence. You know I'll be there. I really believe there is something in the human psyche that abhors simplicity. There was a time in my life that unless there was a slight bit of drama going on, I became suspicious. That's like a, you know how when things are going too good in your life and you kind of like, ah, oh, things are going too good, you kind of expect something bad. It's that type of energy is what she's saying. But just to confirm, do not think like that. Because what I tell y'all, y'all can think yourself in a good shit. You can also think yourself in the bad things. You literally are the creator of your reality. That's why I always say you literally have to wake up and choose to have a good day. Happiness is a choice. I have worked diligently over the year to heal myself of that affliction. Yet somehow in my creation of my world, I suffered a relapse. Why didn't I invite his mother and children, my children and a few friends over to my one acre backyard to witness my godfather who was a minister marrying us? Why didn't my future husband shake me pinch me or in some way negotiate with me to begin our life as a couple in a more tranquil and simplistic way. Why? Because we are all human and that would have been too simple. I was riding the bus one day when a woman and I struck up a conversation about mothers. I told her how much I miss mine. She was my inspiration and my best friend. I recall how many times I had picked up the telephone in the face of good or bad news to dial got a notification uh where's that she was my inspiration and my best friend i recall how many times i had picked up the telephone in the face of good or bad news to dial my mother's number it was usually when i heard the disconnect recording that i remember she was gone what happened to her the woman asked she died i'm sorry for your loss she continued but what happened to her she stopped breathing. <laughs> that's some shit I would say. <laughs> On my mom, that's some shit I would say. Like, she stopped breathing. Fuck, mind your business. I knew where she was going, and I wasn't going there on this bus with a perfect stranger. I realized she died, but what happened? I mean, was she sick? The woman was actually displaying signs of annoyance. Perhaps, I said. But in the end, she simply decided to relinquish her body in its place on the planet, so she just stopped breathing. Now, totally exasperated, she retorted, well, that's a pretty simplistic view of your mother's death. Death, I thought to myself, is simple. Stop breathing, stop living. Very often, when we create drama in our lives, we stop breathing, we stop thinking, our hands become cold, our senses are dull, our mouth becomes dry, it's called stress. More often than most, Stress is not induced by situations and circumstances we face. It is an outgrown, excuse me, it is an outgrowth of our response to the situation. Bro, didn't I say, hold on. I have to highlight this and I'm going to read this again. Death, I thought to myself, is simple. Stop breathing, stop living. Very often we create drama in our lives. We stop breathing. We stop thinking. Our hands become cold. Our senses are dull. Our mouth becomes dry. It's called stress. More often than not, stress is not induced by situations and circumstances we face. It is an outgrowth of our response to the situation. That sounds like we don't stress no more. We pivot. <laughs> Thank you guys for all the likes. Continue to tap the screen. I appreciate it. So that way they don't kick us off the live. I know it's a book club, but we still got to kind of keep it interactive. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys for all the likes, for the follows. Um, but yeah, literally, it is an outgrowth of our response to the situation. That's all that stress is when you don't have a solution. Just pivot. Human beings crave the complex, dramatic, gory, heart-wrenching slant on most things. We have seen evidence of it time and time again. 
even before the two and a half years of the OJ production. In fact, that entire production was staged in response to our collective craving. Keep it simple. To hear those three simple words once cost me $4,100. Perhaps I'll tell that story in another book. I thought I was cured. Obviously, I was wrong. Life, however, always provides us with opportunities for self-correction. I am almost sure that my wedding production will do the trick. <laughs> Shit, I'm sure, because sis, you tried it. <sighs> Confirmation verb, she tried that, y'all. She tried it. <laughs> this talking to 300 people in two hours is crazy. It's crazy. Okay. These are the affirmations. And if you guys want me to repeat any of the affirmations so you guys can write them down, let me know. Today, I realize the simple truth that God loves me. Today, I acknowledge the simple truth that I am creative, that I am a creative being made in the image and likeliness of God. Today, I realize the simple truth that I choose my world by what I think, what I say, and what I do. Today, I understand the simple truth that there is no need for my life to be difficult, nor is there any reason for me to lack any good thing, nor can I be denied what is mine by divine right. Today, I accept the simple truth that simple faith grounded in simple trust, grounded by a simple prayer, will yield simply fantastic results. I like that. I think I'm gonna, I just felt good after, ooh, I felt good after reading that one. All right, I am going to highlight that. That's going on a sticky note. Okay, and this is the last one. For the knowledge of these simple truths, I am so grateful and so it is. God simply loves me. Love is not complicated. Fear complicates all matters. Didn't I tell y'all that? False evidence appearing real. Fear complicates all matters. So if you feel like things are complicated, I love these affirmations too. I told you she snapped with this book. You hear me? Like snapped. Willingness and truth lead to simplicity. I can choose simplicity over complication. Hmm. I've never seen a face too. Okay, so repeat the one you highlighted. I got gotcha. you. Ooh, I might got to write this down. Today, I accept the simple truth that simple faith grounded in simple trust, grounded by simple prayer, will yield simply fantastic results. Let me, should I write it down? Because <laughs> that's a mouthful. I'm gonna write it down. Okay, I got y'all. <laughs> and it might have to be in two, because I think it's pretty long. We'll see though. So trust. Grounded by simple prayer. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be in two. Trying to buy simple prayer. Here we go. Will you simply fantastic results? Yeah, that one is very much like that. Screenshot that. <laughs> Screenshot that. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. And fear complicates all matters. I can choose simplicity over complication. I'm gonna write that one down for y'all too. I like this one. I can choose simplicity over complication. I think those are two really good ones. Okay, so now that you guys have those, I'm gonna go on a phase two. I never seen a phase two, so this is a little different, but Let's check it out. So honor your own self. 
Meditate on your own self. Worship your own self. Kneel to your own self. Understand your own self. Your God dwells within you as you. Muktananda. I did not want to go. There was a particular reason other than the fact that they didn't like me and I wasn't particularly fond of them. There was bad blood between us. Bad family blood. Bad family blood means that you do your best to keep the peace, even when it means sitting around people, acting like you are comfortable when you are miserable. I'm sure we will all play the I love you no matter what game. We all knew how to play the game well. We knew how to smile and exchange nice... <laughs> <laughs> sorry this made me chuckle a little bit okay we all knew how to play the game well we knew how to smile and exchange niceties to hide the fear the anger or fear that was seething beneath the surface we all knew which side the other was on even if we would never admit it it was a bright sunny day and i did not feel like playing that game i also knew there was no excuse short of being dead that would be acceptable if I did not go. Instead of getting ready, I was trying to figure out how to be dead for just one day. Where are we taught that it is okay to say what you feel when you feel it? Certainly it is not when we are children. As children, we are taught what not to say and what not to do if or when it will make others comfortable, uncomfortable, excuse me. The others are the big people. As children, As children, we are taught to take care of the big people, the adults, those in authority. Don't talk when the big people are talking. Don't express your ideas if they are different from the big people's ideas. Always accept what the big people offer you, even if you don't like it. In an insidious, although not malicious way, we are taught that big people matter and we don't. Even when we become big people ourselves, there are still those who are bigger older, more important than we are. These are the people we must honor. In honoring the big people, we are taught to dishonor ourselves. Didn't I say that earlier when I was talking about we're stepping away from that as a people, as a collective? Because we used to put people, certain people on pedestals because they were older than us or we looked up to them or they played a certain role or had a certain title in our lives. So we gave them a certain level of respect that they really weren't deserving of. Because at the end of the day, I always say that, and that's why I look at children differently. Children are literally little adults. So we have to treat them as such because all children grow up one day. You feel me? I used to tell parents to shit that all the time. I'm like, y'all think I'm going to be little forever? It's weird. Why do you not think like that? Like, why do you not give your children that same respect that you would give somebody, an adult? You feel me? But that's just my thought process on things. But yeah, we're stepping away from that. And it's so funny because this book was really, really, <laughs> really written in the 90s. Somebody is listening right now. Like, y'all know how I just be fucking channeling. Somebody is getting so sidetracked on what they're doing and they're just listening to what the fuck I got going on right now. Like, watching. I can feel it. I be trying to just be cordial and shit. You see, this is this is this is what comes with the motherfucking superpowers, bitch. I just be trying to read <laughs> and catch a vibe. <laughs> like, that's it. That's it, and that's all. I gotta be fucking Batman all the time. All right. <laughs> I am while I pack. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> what time is it? Okay, cool. We good on time. The first way we learn to dishonor ourselves is not by telling the truth. The truth. <laughs> the truth about what we feel, what we want, or what we think. In my family, the party lines were children should be seen and not heard. And nobody asks you. I've heard others such as, be grateful for what you get. Don't say that. It's not nice. When you heard those these things, you knew to shut your mouth and stuff your feelings because you were threading on very thin ice. 
if that ice broke, you could be yelled at, slapped, or punished. Worse yet, you could get a half hour long lecture about the inappropriateness of your behavior. As a child, I learned that spontaneous outbursts of truth about big people, instinctually perceptions about wrongdoings by big people, and clearly observed acts of hypocrisy committed by big people were not to be discussed or challenged. Bro, I swear that's... <laughs> I was a kid that got in trouble for that because I was like, they was like, you always questioning the authority. I'm like, because these fucking adults don't make no sense. And I see that as a child. So yes, I'm going to ask questions. And they did not like that. When I tell y'all every time I got in trouble as a kid, it was because I questioned some shit that need to be questioned and they didn't like me questioning some shit. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I digress, I digress. Often I was told not to believe what I saw or I was convinced that what I felt about a situation was not correct. You feel me? This is why a lot of people be having a hard time trusting their intuition because we were literally programmed as children to not do so. That said, it's private. It said, it's about <laughs> Yeah, literally. I'll say that shit in private, in public, in your face. You feel me? I'll tell your mom. Often I was told not to believe what I saw or what I was convinced that what I felt about a situation was not correct. Instead, I was to accept the explanation offered by big people about the situation. As an adult, I continued to view my parents and elders and elder relatives as big people. Eventually, this group grew to include employers and other persons in authority. I would do in all my power to honor the feelings and desires of these people, even when it meant dishonoring myself. When you lie to yourself about what you need, you will eventually lie to others about the same things. I remember that, ooh, bitch, that's a fucking bar. When you lie to yourself about what you need, you will eventually lie to others about the same things. And this is so funny because even in relationships, it's like, you know how you'll accept some stuff and it's like, no, it's fine, it's fine, like, that's okay. Knowing damn well that that shit is not okay. So you start lying to yourself, you feel me? You lying about your own needs. And then you're not happy with this person. Then you start lying to them, saying it's not them. Because it's really not. The whole time it's you. Mm. I be on the money. Hi, lovey. How are you? Facts. I caught... Yeah. That sounds like I had to run that back. All right. Let's keep going. This, I told y'all, this is a gym. This is a gym. Okay. I remember that when I started dating, I was more concerned... <laughs> Bruh, okay, let me keep going. I remember when I started dating, I was more concerned with not upsetting my dates than I was with honoring myself. When they showed up late, it was okay. When they did not call as promised, I would question them, but I was very careful not to speak harshly. When they did show up as promised, I had very few, op very few opinions about anything. Where do you want to go? Oh, anywhere you choose is fine. What do you want to eat? What do you want? Answering a question with another question is not a good way to get what you want. It is not the way to honor yourself. However, I was mindful for not asking for too much or not saying the wrong thing, particularly when I had no idea of the kind of budget we were working with. My dates, like my parents, teachers, supervisors, neighbors, ministers, were people who had something that I needed or wanted. I knew better than to offend or upset them. They were big people. Lying to, my, lying to yourself and other people about what you need, want, like, or do not like is akin to having a bacterial fungus. Good. <laughs> Good. Did you use the video to, like, help you with the bath? Because that was very random. <laughs> but I like that. I feel like you did. That's probably why you said it. <laughs> I love that for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'll be fucking tapped in, baby. I cannot. I love it. Let me keep going. <laughs> Lying to yourself and other people about what you need, want, like, or do not like is akin to having a bacterial fungus. It spreads quickly into all areas of your life and pollutes your very being. 
When you are polluted by the fungus of dishonor, it is difficult to speak up for yourself. The fungus seals your lips when people speak to you in inappropriate ways. The fungus clouds your brain when people behave toward you in an inappropriate manner. This lip sealing, brain clouding fungus always makes you doubt yourself. It makes you question what you are feeling when you are feeling it. It prohibits you finding the most appropriate way to respond when your sensibilities are offended by big people. But like all bacteria, a fungus that is not treated will turn into an infection. The infection that grows when you do not honor yourself becomes anger or rage. Anger or rage becomes what pours forth from you when big people or little people for that matter say or do things that have gone unchecked by you for long periods of time. The fungus of not honoring what you feel when you feel it or saying what you need. Thank you guys for the subscribes on um, YouTube. <laughs> The fungus of not honoring what you feel when you feel it or saying what you need to say when you need to say it will pull forth as anger and pollute your relationships. Family relationships, professional relationships, personal and intimate relationships. None are immune to the fungus that grows within you. Do not honor yourself every step of the way, along the way in your relationships with other people. The infection that grows when you do not honor yourself becomes anger or rage. Oh, baby. I almost set that man house on fire. <laughs> oh, I got to highlight this one. Mm. Thank God for time. That is crazy. And I like this too. It makes you question what you are feeling when you are feeling it. It prohibits you finding the most appropriate way to respond when your sensibilities are offended by big people. Right, the reflection, because I just had a flashback, baby. But yeah, it prohibits you finding the most appropriate way to respond when your sensibilities are offended by big people. Mm. That's like, cause I always wonder, cause I'm super into psychology and everything. And I always wonder why like people would just get so angry. Like even today, right? I, one of my plugs, <laughs> I was just like, hmm, like he was just real, you know, I, I'm a, I read energy, right? So I'm like, you just seem a little irritable, you feel me? And the old me would have got offended because I would have been like, who the fuck are you talking to? respectfully you feel me but i'm like nah this ain't even my shit he got a lot going on i could feel the tenseness i could feel the animosity you feel me within the things that he has going on for himself you feel me and i could tell that it was somebody above him to where he felt like it was a where do where i want to take this it was a bigger person right to where he couldn't express himself so that turned into anger and rage you feel me? And I'm just like, it's important to check that, right? Because that only happens when things go unchecked for long periods of time. The fungus of not honoring what you feel when you feel it or saying what you need to say when you need to say it will pour forth as anger and pollute your relationships. That's why when people get angry, they take it out on other people because it's literally a fungus. You ever have something piss you off and then you just be snapping on everybody else. Like for the the best way that I can put it is like something piss you off in the morning. Let's just say you drop your coffee. That made you mad, right? And then now you out in traffic and you mad that the lady cut you off. It really wasn't the lady cutting you off. You was already fucked up from your coffee spilling on you in the first place. You feel me? So it's like a transfer. It's like a transfer. Let me keep going. This is good. I was 30 years old when someone finally told me I mattered enough for them to care about what I felt. I was standing in a circle of strangers, most of whom were older, wealthier, and much more educated than I was at the time. When someone looked me in the eye and said, well, what do you think? I had been married, given birth to three children, and been divorced when somebody uttered the words to me, honor yourself. 
talk about blow your mind. <laughs> it was not something that I had ever considered. Honor myself, admit what I feel, say what I am thinking out loud in a room full of big people, ask for what I want, even if I don't see what it is available at the moment. You have got to be out of your mind. <laughs> and it's so crazy because a lot of people think like that. A lot of people think like that. The person was not insane. He was a minister and I was in an empowerment workshop. We were going through an exercise designed to develop trust and truth. He had told us that the only way to learn to trust yourself enough to honor yourself as a divine and unique expression of God was to tell the truth. He was in charge. He was a big person. Someone in the group had just offered a very harsh criticism of him. And with no warning, he turned to me and asked, well, what do you think? It's really rather hard to think when your brain is frying and your hair is falling off. <laughs> and I was just talking about imposter syndrome in a reading too. And this is very much what it's giving because her feelings was never heard, because she was never seen, because all of those things, she was finally put in a space where she was seen and she felt unworthy of being seen because that was something that never happened before. And that's really important. That is really important. That's something to really pay attention to right there. Because I will always wonder. My left ear just started ringing. Not me channeling. But I always wonder why I attracted people who wasn't really able to like speak up for themselves in a sense, right? Confirmation. I get that imposter thingy more than you for that. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But um, I always attract people who have imposter syndrome, who are not really confident and comfortable within themselves. And I've always been a person who was confident in myself always. Even when people tried to beat that shit out of me, I'm like, fuck y'all, I'm the shit bitch, fuck you, for real. But I always attract people who was not like that. You feel me? And I feel like God brings people across my path. Okay, oh, perfect, okay. I'm happy you understand it now. I always get people who cross my path and I feel like it's because I'm that like light. Because the thing about it is you always had it in you, but it's always somebody, who, I'm not gonna say it always takes somebody else. But most of the time, if you've been dealing with this, it does take somebody else outside of you to acknowledge that within you, to reignite it, because it's already been there. It's not something that I'm giving you. It's something that I'm helping you tap into so you can ignite it within yourself and pull that back out. I make people feel seen. That is so important. That's some deep shit right there. I just had a moment. <laughs> wow. That's different. I never noticed how many people really didn't feel seen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that's crazy. All right. Cause that's some deep shit. That's some deep shit. All right. Let me keep going. What time is it? Yeah. Let me keep going. Well. No wells. <laughs> That's me. No wells. Like, what do, what do you think? He yelled at me. The minute you say well, or I don't know, you are saying you don't want to talk about it. You are here to talk, so talk. What do you think about what she just said? I could feel the 50 eyeballs in the room piercing my skin. I could hear my grandmother's voice in the background. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Are all black people the same? <laughs> Are our ancestors gang fuck i could see my mother's eyes darting across the room at me giving me the mother's look that lets you know if you opened your mouth you would be swiftly put to death i could smell my brain matter frying with all of this going on there was the big person standing there waiting for an answer the words escaped from my mouth before i could examine or censor them i feel the same way i don't think you have to yell and scream at us to get your point across we are not deaf we have paid to be here, which means we are willing to learn. It is hard to learn when you are in fear. Are you really afraid of me? He asked gently. No, not really. 
I think I'm more afraid of what you will say or do if I don't give you the right answer. What is the right answer? He was pushing it a bit, but it felt good. I felt like the right answer is the one that pops into your mind at the moment. The big question is, how do you give that answer without hurting or offending the other person? He got down on his knees, looked me directly in the eye, and said, honor what you feel by saying it the way you would want to hear it. When you say it honestly and with love, your job is over. <laughs> I like this motherfucker right here. <laughs> That's facts. When you say it honestly and with love, your job is over. It don't matter how you take it, because as long as it's genuine and it's coming from the heart, you're either going to receive the message or you're not. That's facts. I did not go to the dinner. I stayed home, puttering around the house. I opened all the windows to let the fresh air, spring air in. I gave myself a facial and polished my nails. I went out hunting for shoes. When I didn't find any, I brought ice cream instead. <laughs> That's something I'll do. When I arrived back at home, I took a nap and I had a nightmare. I heard my aunt and grandmother screaming at me for not coming to the dinner. I heard them say how I thought I was better than everyone else and how things always had to go my way. I heard my brother asking me repeatedly why was I so stupid. Didn't I know the way they were? How come I always had to keep things in an uproar? Then my god sister walked up to me and asked what I was doing there. She told me I could have stayed away and said me said my coming would only cause trouble. In the dream, everyone was screaming at me. I could feel their anger, which made me both sad and angry. I screamed back. As usual, they could not hear me because the fungus of anger had clogged all of our ears. I woke up crying with my heart pounding. Sitting on the edge of the bed, blowing my nose, I was a little girl again, trying to please everyone again, dishonoring myself again. I couldn't figure out which felt worse, not pleasing the big people or dishonoring what I felt. The phone rang. It was my aunt. Without even saying hello, she asked, what happened to you today? The dead air of no response encouraged her to rephrase the question. I mean, we thought something happened to you. Where were you? Honor yourself. The day just got away from me. That was not the truth, and I really did not feel like coming. Oh, I see. You had something more important to do, I suppose. No, I just decided to honor what I was feeling by staying home and taking care of me today. Boy, she said, I really need you to teach me how to do that. I didn't feel like going either, but you know how they are. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep going before I tell y'all that. As I listened to her recount the day, who wore what, who said what, who drank how much, and what they said and did as a result. I smiled and mentally affirmed, honor yourself. It is a really great deal, easier than we think. Baby. Baby. Honor yourself. I love that. Because that is a fact. Have you ever done something different? You told an elder, a mom, a sister, a grandparent, and they're like, oh, I wish I would have done that, or oh, I wish I would have da 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 But those are also the same people who would have told you not to do this shit in the first place. That's what honor yourself is. This, I'm just leaving this. I got to tell for today, because it's just not trying to stay up. It's whatever. Yeah. I love this, so... I guess we don't have any affirmations for that one. That was a long chapter. That was only eight. Okay, let's keep going. Now we're on day nine. This is awareness. Honor yourself with awareness. The principle we are working with today is awareness. It is intuitive knowledge. The ability to recognize and harness the spirit of truth in action. Knowledge or information void of emotional charge or judgment. A teacher once told me, if one person says you are a horse, you don't have to listen. If two people say you are a horse, you probably need to pay a bit more attention to what you are doing. If three people say you are a horse, then more than likely you have hay hanging out of your mouth and saddle on your back. <laughs> In other words, people looking at you can see things that you may not be aware of. Very often we are unwilling or unable to discuss with one another the unpleasant aspects of ourselves. 
Rather than discuss what we feel, we criticize one another. People always told me I looked angry. When they were not saying I looked angry, they were saying that I was defensive and combative. Whenever these things were said to me, I would become offended and would go into a long tirade about people not knowing me, what I thought, or what I felt. I usually ended my little speech by saying how sick and tired I was of being criticized and that I was not angry, damn it. When you refuse to pay attention to what life is saying to you, life will make its point very clear. Life wants us to be aware of ourselves so we can make the necess necessary adjustments in order to live more harmoniously. Life was trying to make me aware that I was acting like a horse, but I kept insisting that I was a kitten. Life was trying to remind me that I was a divine representative of God, acting like a complete fool. One day it became very clear that I had hay hanging out of my mouth. A friend of mine needed help in some and getting some paperwork through an administrative bureaucracy. As an administrator in the institution, I had a few favors to call in, so I accompanied her to the office of the woman who was presenting the problem. When we entered the office, the woman was engaged in a verbal debate with another person. We stood quietly at the counter, waiting for our turn to talk to her. Suddenly and without warning, the woman turned to us and started screaming about what she would and would not do. She then pointed her finger in my face and challenged me to get out of her office. I asked her what her problem was and why she thought she had the right to talk to me in that manner. More words of a very unkind and unprofessional manner were exchanged, and I eventually left the office without resolving the situation. That's a pleasant way of saying you cussed her the fuck out. Give me one second. Because where? Who are you talking to? Respectfully. <laughs> yeah you felt super felt hey sis <laughs> super felt who are you talking to <laughs> corrective action <laughs> fuck all right let me keep going <laughs> like what all right tweaking Two days later, I was sitting at my desk when my supervisor called, asking me to report to his office. <laughs> I arrived to find my supervisor and two other men waiting for me. One of the men handed me a piece of paper. It was an arrest warrant. I was being charged with a felonious, felonious? I'm not sure how to enunciate that. Felonious assault. I think it's, yeah, felonious. Assault of the woman with whom I had the argument two days earlier now she pressed charges the warrant charge that i pushed her across the office necessitating that she locking herself in the closet to get away from my attack next she stated that i waited for her in the parking lot jumped from behind her parked car and beat her about the head and face causing serious injury to her neck and back she also alleged that i had slashed the tires of her car the men who were police officers said i i would have to appear in court to answer the charges my supervisor asked what had happened. I recounted the events of the day the best that I could, assuring him that I had not seen the woman once I left the office. I told him I did not know what kind of car she drove, and I, and since I did not have a car, it was unlikely that I would be lurking around in the parking lot. Witnesses? What about witnesses? There were none, but the woman had identified me by name. Being accused of doing something you did not do was one thing. Being charged with a crime you did not commit is a completely different story. It is a horror story. I went back to the woman's office in an, in an attempt to figure out what was going on. When I walked in, people shuffling papers around on their desk. In other words, they were ignoring me, asking no one in particular. I'll thank you guys for the gifts. <laughs> no one in particular, I said, who was in the office saw me push this woman. No one responded. Then I asked them to show me the closet. There was only a supply closet that contained six shelves. Where did she hide, I asked. Still no response. I knew these people. We had worked together for years. Were they losing their minds? Or had I lost my mind, blacked out, and attacked this woman? I kept questioning myself and other people. Nobody had any clues about what was really going on. Over the course of the next several weeks, the horror story became a nightmare. 
the woman came back to work wearing a neck brace. She was suing the institution, which was liable for the actions of its administrative staff. There were stories and pictures printed in a local newspaper. People who had known me for years stopped speaking to me, including the woman who had asked for my help. I was moved from my nice, cushy office to an office in the warehouse building. I was questioned repeatedly by the police, the board of directors, and the corporation attorneys. The most amazing thing was, with absolutely no evidence to substantiate her claims, most of the people I spoke to believed my accuser. Life was obviously trying to tell me something, but in my fear and anger, I was rendered deaf, dumb, and blind. Okay, so maybe I had stormed out of a few meetings, and so what if I had fired five or six secretaries in the past year? None of this meant that I went around beating people up in parking lots. What it did mean, however, was that I was totally unaware of how people saw and responded to me. My supervisor's assistant stopped by my office one day just to chat. Eventually, we got around to discussing the charges against me. I told her how hard it was for me to understand why people believe this woman. She told me that's just how people see you. They see you as angry and threatening. People are intimidated by you. I know your bark is worse than your bite, and I know that you are not guilty, but other people believe that what she says is quite possible. Don't you just love people who come right out and say what's on their mind? Isn't it even more thrilling when what they say shuts your mouth and sits you down? I wanted to say I had no idea what she was talking about, but that would not have been true. I knew. My supervisor wants, thank you guys for the follows, for the likes. Yes, 4.7K, period, run this up. <laughs> My supervisor once told me that all I had to do was walk into the room and trouble follow me. Why? Why would he say that? More important, why was it true? Someone else said there was something about me that felt, excuse me, that left a bad taste in people's mouths. These statements usually made it made in the form of criticism kept me on the defensive. Criticism when offered in a way that invalidates you will do that. If, however, you are on the path to self-awareness and personal growth, criticism can provide you with very profound insight into yourself. If you can move beyond anger and fear, those who criticize you are actually using the only means they know, they know of to make you aware of how to impact the world. Of how you impact the world, excuse me. put on mascara today or something why my eyes keep itching i don't even like mascara that shit irritates me i wouldn't do that interesting okay let's keep going where was that here we go if you can move beyond anger and fear those who criticize you are actually using the only means they knew of to make you aware of how you impact the world okay if you can control the ego Long enough to hear what is being said, you may just realize that people usually say to you the very things you have said silently to yourself. <laughs> That's so true. That is so true. That is very true. The charges were eventually dropped, and it was many years later before any of it made any sense to me. It made no sense at all until I stabbed my husband, crashed my car. <laughs> <laughs> bro it, <laughs> all right let me keep going let me keep going now she stabbed her mans she stabbed her mans up right <laughs> <laughs> now she poked them up all right she <laughs> and crashed the car you want to some funny shit my my aunt did the same thing my aunt fucking she tried to set my fucking uncle on fire and everything. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you crazy. <laughs> it get like that sometimes. You feel me? I'm just not trying to be in those type of situations. I swear. Yeah, I'm the one, my birthday twin. The rage. I wish a motherfucker would get me there. I'm going to just have to walk away. <laughs> That's why I was like, I almost set that nigga house on fire a few years back in North Philly. He had me fucked up. But... Thank God for time. Thank God for self-awareness. <laughs> Cause a bitch would have been in prison. <laughs> Times 
have changed. You feel me? That's where the constructive criticism comes in and you start to check yourself. Because motherfuckers, that you fucked up. You hear me? You feel me? And now she like traveling all over the world, helping people in their own life. You feel me? But back in the 99 and the 2000s, she was slicing up her husband and crashing a car and shit. But it happens. It happens. <laughs> It's life. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> it made no sense at all until I stabbed my husband, crashed my car, and had a nervous breakdown. It was anger. It was fear. It was a series of events that made me aware of how aggressive and combative I could be in response to anger. Facts. If you have ever been really angry with someone, you know how hard it can be to feel good about that person. The mere thought of them can send you into a rage. If you can imagine the impact of this degree of being angry, being directed at, excuse me, of this degree of anger being directed at someone, imagine the impact it has when it is directed at the person you see in the mirror every morning. People know when you are angry. They sense it in your voice. They see it in your mannerisms. People respond to anger with fear. Fear can make a person see something that is not there or hear something that is not said. This is what I had experienced. The energy inside me, of which I was totally unaware, had manifested as an experience of anger and fear. Becoming aware of yourself and the impact you have on the world is not an easy task. It is not for the faint of heart or for the weak in mind. Facts. It requires the same kind of determination I imagine most Olympic distant runners must have. Facts. That's why Nipsey Hussle always say, like, it's a fucking marathon. The marathon continues. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not a 100-meter dash. It's not a motherfucking four by two. None of that. It is a marathon, baby. A marathon. You must be willing to listen. Keep plug <clears throat> plugging along. Learning to accept, understand, and love yourself exactly as you are. Coming from where you have been. The first step toward awareness is being willing to look at yourself in your life without judgment or self-criticism. Every little detail must be examined. Every experience, incident, and entanglement must be revisited and explored. It was James Baldwin who said, you cannot fix what you will not face. Mm. Uh, baby, James Baldwin, James Baldwin. He was a designer. I think he also did music too. I went to James Baldwin School in Philadelphia. Fun fact, before I started designing jewelry, the brand was actually supposed to be a clothing brand. And I was like doing sewing classes and in school and everything, but that shit was hard. So I said, fuck that. <laughs> it was too many, it was too many options for me. It was too many options for me, I swear. But yeah. The Fine Divine was originally a clothing brand, straight up. And I was going to specialize in the athleisure wear and like, kind of, I don't really know how to explain it. It was really going to be something new, but I'm going to keep that under wraps because I might still come back out with it. So chill. <laughs> but yeah, everything happens full circle. You cannot fix what you will not face. The clue to successful awareness is that you only have to look and become aware. You do not have to fix. Hey, lovey, how are you? <laughs> Once you are aware, you are empowered to choose what works and what does not work. Once you become aware, there is no longer a need to fear criticism. You realize that people are not trying to invalidate who you are or what you do. When folks point out unpleasant things about you of which you are already aware, rather than falling into a trap of anger, you can simply say, thank you for sharing. I know that about myself and I'm working on it. And that's facts. Okay, so these are the affirmations. If you guys want me to um, repeat any or write any down, let me know. And this is for um, day nine, chapter awareness. Today, I choose awareness. I choose to be aware of the beauty of life and living. I choose to be aware of the simple truths in life. I choose to be aware of the simple pleasures in life. I choose awareness of joy. I choose awareness of peace. I choose awareness of love. 
I choose to see, to feel, to know the presence of divine energy in myself and those around me. Today, I choose to be aware and to embrace all that is good, noble, and divine. As my awareness of joy, peace, love, and goodness grow in my consciousness, joy, peace, love, and goodness become the reality in which I live. For this, I am so grateful, and so it is. You can tell she like wrote this shit with her heart chakra, bro. Like my heart just feels so fluttery after I read these affirmations. <laughs> Life always makes me aware of what I need to know. I cannot change what I am not willing to face. Awareness is the path to better choices. Self-awareness is the key to peace. Awareness opens the mind and heart to new possibilities. I love this. I cannot change what I am not willing to face. Okay, oh, 804, perfect. So we're right on time. We're going to um, finish up chapter 10, and then we're going to finish up for today. And what's tomorrow, Thursday? I think the only thing we have for Thursday is we were supposed to have the book club tomorrow. We might still have it tomorrow. I think we'll still have it tomorrow. But next week, I think I'm going to change it to Mondays, Wednesdays, excuse me, Mondays, Tuesdays, and what's today? Wednesday? Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. I think I'm going to change it to Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, but we'll see. <clears throat> Confirmation burp. But we'll definitely be on tomorrow for the... Damn, I got to check my own fucking schedule. Give me one second. Let me check the schedule. <laughs> I'm trying to get used to the new schedule myself. <laughs> I'm not used to doing all these things at once. And it's on the website. <laughs> For real. Can you tell I am a new business owner? <laughs> Let me check. Where the fuck did I even put the schedule? Here we go. Ciao. All I had to do was flip it. Okay, yeah. So tomorrow we have the 2 p.m. collective reading and then 7 p.m. book club. So we will do the book club tomorrow again at 7. And then the tipsy tarot this week, we'll have it on Saturday instead of Friday. Tipsy Tarot be lit. The word. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's finish up chapter 10 and then we'll be on tomorrow at 7. Yeah. That's what we'll do. So the beginning of the week will be like, we'll do book club, learning, education, and then the rest of the week is like, freak nasty, we lit, turn us up, it's the weekend type shit. That's the energy it's giving. And I'm here for it. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking with that. All right, let me add that to the schedule. Yeah, all right, bet. Okay, so day 10, acceptance. <laughs> I'm cracking up. Some of the comments are filtered. So if y'all said something, I did not see it. I am not seeing everything. The principle we are working with today is acceptance. It is receiving without criticism or judgment. To embrace the fullness of a situation or experience. An inner realization that all is well, regardless of the outward expression. I knew my husband was sleeping around, but I could not, would not accept it. To accept it meant I would have to do something about it, and I did not know what to do. I had no job and no money, so I could not leave him. I had three children who adored their father, and I would not deny them the pleasure of his company. On top of it all, I had a rip-roaring inferiority complex, and I was not going to give my man up to another woman. Although I felt unworthy, unattractive, and undesirable, I would not accept that my seven-year marriage could be brought to an abrupt halt by the mere presence of a woman. I would hunt her down and kill her. That would be the end of it. You do not have to like what is going on in your life, but you must accept that it, that it, whatever it is, is going on. As long as you do not accept reality, you are powerless to define the role you will play. Mm. As long as you do not accept reality, you are powerless to define the role you will play. That's some deep shit. 
That's facts too. Failure to accept reality is a denial of your power to make a conscious choice. When you do not choose, you live by default. You are a victim of circumstances. This probably sounds very right and makes a great deal of sense. When, however, you discover that something in your life is not going the way you would like it to go, nothing makes sense. It makes you angry or afraid. When you are angry, nothing makes sense. If you are afraid, it makes even less sense. If you are angry, afraid, and planning murder, you have no sense. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> I've been that. <laughs> I've been that. <laughs> I fucking love him. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <sighs> Yo, I, I know I love Terry Brown. And this all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> don't boost me, don't boost me. <laughs> I've been that. Yo, he said, All my pookies. Yo, I fucking love him, bro. He's so funny. Okay, so there comes a time. <laughs> There comes a time in everyone's life where they must accept that nothing makes sense and they have no sense, but everything will still turn out okay. <laughs> Acceptance is knowing that no matter what, everything is and will be just fine. Acceptance is simply recognition. When you recognize a thing, you see it for what it is. All of our experiences, no matter how awful they appear to be, are temporary. Acceptance of an experience as a temporary situation can make it a lot easier to handle. It does not mean you will not be temporarily angry, frightened, or senseless. It means you can usually handle something in a calmer manner when you know it is a temporary situation. Acceptance is also an excuse me, express ticket out of fear and anger. It takes you from where you are to where you want to be without stopping in every little hick town of negative emotion. Accepting a thing does not mean you approve of what is going on, nor does it mean you are not being impacted by what is going on. Acceptance means you are able to withdraw the emotional attachment just long enough to really see what is happening. Without the emotional charge, you may even discover that what is happening has nothing to do with you. You see it, feel it, may even know that something must be done. However, it is only from the emotional detachment posture of acceptance that you can make a wise choice. That's facts. When the woman showed up on my doorstep, I was forced to accept reality. Acceptance is a form of initiation. It is a rite of passage. You are passing from the fantasy you have created in your own mind for your own protection into the real world of truth and facts. When you undergo the initiation of acceptance, it usually means that something secret and hidden is being revealed to you. It means that you are being called to show that, to show what you are made of. Give me one second. We have facts. This is a really good book. Damn, I'm out of water, bro. That's crazy. <sighs> Not I'm here thirsty. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's cool. We about to be finished anyway. I'm sorry. And I'm not drinking from the water down. Not doing that. I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. Where was I at? Okay. Acceptance is a form of initiation. It is a rite of passage. You are passing from the fantasy you have created in your own mind for your own protection into the real world of truth and facts. When you undergo the initiation of acceptance, it usually means that something secret and hidden is being revealed to you. It means you are being called to show what you are made of. You are being put on notice what the time has come for you to demonstrate what you stand for. It is an act of courage. Acceptance is a courageous act of doing what you know you must do before you are forced to do it. I asked a woman to come in. Acceptance is the essence of respect for one's self and others. When you accept the reality of your life, thereby demonstrating your willingness to make a conscious choice, you honor the wisdom, strength, and tenacity of the divine spirit within you. When you accept the reality of the choices others have made, 
realizing, although you may not like what is going on, that you have the strength and courage to live through it. You honor the right of others to choose without blaming them for your wounds. You don't like ants at your picnic, but you don't turn the entire park over to them, do you? You accept that the ants have just as much right to be in the park as you do. <clears throat> and you take the necessary precautions to keep them out of your potato salad. Acceptance is like knowing there will be ants at the picnic. It is acknowledgement that there are needs and circumstances other than your own. By making this acknowledgement, you are empowered to develop a strategy for your protection without stepping on the needs of others. After she demanded that I give my husband a divorce, I told her the only way she would have him was if she also took his dog. <laughs> Without the emotional charge of anger, fear, and victimization, it is easy to accept the reality of your life. By accepting what is, you become keenly aware of what isn't. When you know what isn't, you can begin to determine what you must do. Acceptance also requires a great deal of trust and even more patience. You must trust yourself enough to know that you will make the right choices. You must trust that the universe will provide you with every single thing you need in order to accomplish what you set out to do. You must accept that you want to, excuse me, you must accept that what you want to do may not be an easy task, which means you must be patient with yourself. Be patient when you get angry or afraid. Be patient when you are tempted to lie to yourself and not accept the truth. Be patient when it seems things are not going right and may never be right again. Accept what is yours will come to you in the right way at just the right moment. Patiently acknowledge and accept that what is not for you is not for you, no matter what you choose to tell yourself. Ants do not get discouraged when they climb into the picnic table only to discover that all your goodies are covered with aluminum foil. They crawl back down and patiently wait around the table legs until you drop your plate. When the woman left with the six garbage bags full of clothes and the dog, I went out in the backyard and finished hanging the laundry. When there was only one sheet left in the laundry basket, I sat down on the grass and cried. This is really good. Okay, so these are the affirmations for acceptance. If you guys want me to write any of them down or read any of them again, let me know. I accept the presence of divine life expressing itself as me. I accept my right to be alive. I accept my right to know joy. I accept my right to live in peace. I accept my right to know love, give love, and receive love. I accept that when I do not choose joy, peace, and love as a foundation of my life, I am choosing a reality that is not divine. Above all, I choose to accept the will, joy, peace, and love of the divine as the center of my being and the foundation of my life. For this, I am so grateful, and so it is. Acceptance is a sign of courage. Acceptance empowers me to make a conscious choice. Acceptance of what is does not mean liking it as it is. I gotta highlight that. <laughs> Choosing in fear is not acceptance. Choosing in anger is not acceptance. Acceptance requires that I trust myself and the divine. Acceptance requires that I be patient with myself, others, and the process of life. I love this book. Damn, she get me every time. Okay. It's giving alterations in ego. That's what it's giving. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> I love this acceptance of what it does not mean liking it as it is. That's facts. 
because I don't feel like we talk about this enough, but like as for people who are truly chosen, like God's gifted, God's favorite, like we really don't have to work for. Hold on. Let me let me wait till it go back green. Let me wait till I go back green so y'all can make sure y'all hear me clear. Right. It's green. We lit. Because then I say it's going to be some random surprises and shit. Why the fuck would he call me? And why is you calling me? No, what's my phone? 819. I mean, it's not late, but it's late enough. Don't be calling my phone. Text me first. He lucky it's a regular call. Yes, I'ma write it um, the other way next time. But yes, <laughs> that was that was my dumbass fault. Yes, that's the author. If you want to screenshot it. Child, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> For real. I, after I wrote it, then I thought about it. I'm like, God damn, that was some dumb shit, but it's fine. I'm going to get it right next time. It's been a long day for you, baby. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> but yeah, that was a surprise. Where the fuck did he come from? <laughs> and why is you hitting my phone now? Like, don't do that. Damn, that's crazy. And the fact that his middle name is, this, that's crazy to me. What time is it? 8.20. Perfect. This is perfect time. We ended right on time. So I'll make sure um, that for anyone who missed the beginning of it, this video will be up on a YouTube channel tomorrow. So you guys will be able to watch part one, two, and three. And I'm going to keep them um, um, under like a hour. I'm over here reading backwards like I need this. <laughs> yes, it's really good. Please get it. Um, the book club's. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, and you guys, the whenever I update the schedule, I didn't want to add it to the TikTok because it'd be a lot of scammers and fake pages and stuff. So I'll put it on the actual website. So for the schedule, just go to the official TikTok, my official TikTok, and click on the website and scroll all the way to the bottom. And it'll have the schedule for the lives um, for the week. And I'll make sure it's updated every week for you guys. So the Tipsy Tarot, when the book club meetings, the subscriber meetings, whatever we're doing, it'll be on the website for you guys on the schedule. Something I just didn't want to add it to TikTok because people be stealing shit. And there's so many fake pages of me now and it's crazy. Um, nigga, we made it. <laughs> That's how you know when people fucking imitation is a form of flatteration. So it's fine. But these videos will be up for you guys and if you want to purchase the book please 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 definitely get it so even once we're done with the book club it'll something that you can have in your archive um because it's just so many gems in here i swear this is my first time reading it with you all as well it was a gift from my aunt it's a beautiful read i thought i had the power of awareness for the people who like were with us from the beginning like way back in april baby i completely forgot to download them and it was september 28th tiktok was like if you don't get your videos they're going to be deleted after 30 days so i'm a double double check tomorrow but i think they deleted them <laughs> i'm sorry but that book was pretty long i think it kind of took us like a, almost six weeks to finish that for real it was really good but i'm happy you guys are enjoying this like the followers and everything are like picking up for the book club so Shout out to y'all for wanting to pour into yourselves. I fucking love it because most people don't be reading. But if you want to hide something from a motherfucker, put it in a book. That's why if you want to know something, pick up a motherfucking book. <laughs> Facts. Real shit. But real shit. People don't be reading enough for me, baby. I'm happy you guys requested the book club to be back because it is something that I enjoy. And I'm happy to share that with y'all because I'm definitely an advocate reader. I read at least two books a month. <laughs> you're very welcome i know i was so excited about the schedule because i'm like i started noticing i'm like damn this is like this is really a thing like i i get paid and everything from tiktok i'm like okay wow i have to <laughs> this is a schedule like y'all be having me on here working and i enjoy it um i really do yeah i really do confirmation alert. and i didn't think i would because like i said i'm not really a social media person whatever but i enjoy this because I'm not just on here just being cute and just talking shit. Like, I'm really helping people. 
Yeah, y'all really do. Like, I'm talking about DMs and everything. Like, where you at? What time you coming on? Like, I think I missed you. <laughs> I'm popping up on for you pages and everything. So I just, I just feel really blessed and really grateful. So thank you guys for showing all the support and all the people who really show up and been a part of the community from the beginning. Like the genuine love, I can really feel it. Like. <laughs> And even for the haters, thank you. Keep watching because you guys are also getting the likes and the views up. So thank you. <laughs> Literally, like, I'm just so grateful. I really am. Y'all really do. Y'all really be at me. Like, we in a whole relationship. Like, we locked in at this point. We're in a whole situation. <laughs> at this point, I can't go nowhere. <laughs> at this point, I can't go nowhere. I'm done. I'm about to get off. It's 824. I wanted to wrap it up, keep it under an uh, hour and 30 minutes. So that way, when you guys go back and rewatch them, it's digestible. You feel me? So I will see you guys tomorrow at 2 for the collective reading. Later. <laughs> You're very welcome, loveys.